this up here is the muscle of the diaphragm. It's going to be important for you guys to be able to distinguish between the muscle and what's called the central tendon. On this model specifically, you only see the muscle of the diaphragm. Don't just call it the diaphragm. Okay, we'll get to the central tendon later. These arteries here are the inferior phrenic. This is called the celiac trunk. The three branches of the celiac trunk are what? Left gastric, common hepatic, and splenic. You will need to know that for both lecture and lab. This is the superior mesenteric artery. This is the inferior mesenteric artery. These are the gonadal arteries, and these are the gonadal veins. Down here are the ureters. Up here are the adrenal glands, and you can see the vessels going to them. So the blue vessels are the suprarenal veins, and the red ones are the suprarenal arteries. This is going to be the left renal vein, and that's going to be the left renal artery, and on, over on this side you're going to see the right. The outside layer of the kidney, which is this organ right here, is called the renal capsule. Now it is important for the structures of the kidney to have the word renal. The only one you don't do this for is ureter. Okay? Everything else is renal. So you have the renal capsule on the outside, and then this light pink in here is called the renal cortex. This yellow are called the renal columns, and these dark pink structures in here are the renal pyramids. Now at the end of the renal pyramids, you actually see it on this model a little bit better, you can see these brown structures right here. These brown structures are the renal papilla. They attach the renal pyramids to all this in here, which is called the renal pelvis, which is this opening in here. Something to note for lecture is the difference between renal pyramids and renal columns. Renal columns are <clears throat> areas or structures in the kidney that actually hold the vessels for the kidney. So they're going to hold the, all the arteries, all the veins, all the capillaries, all that fun stuff. Okay, Anything to do with blood flow, blood circulation, that's all in the renal columns. The renal pyramids don't have any of that. The renal pyramids are actually structures that expand and contract to filter surrounding fluid in the kidney. So, as they expand and contract, they're going to filter fluid, and what gets filtered out is urine. Mm -hmm. So your pyramids are actually producing the urine, which are then picked up by the renal papillas here, and then dumped into the renal pelvis in here, and then dumped through the ureters into the urinary bladder. This is the transversus abdominis muscle. This is going to be quadratus lumborum. This muscle here is called iliacus. It is called iliacus because it attaches to a bone called the ilium. Now the specific part of the bone that it attaches to up here is called the iliac crest. So while it is correct to say the iliacus attaches to the ilium, the reason why it's called iliacus is because it specifically attaches to the iliac crest. At the point or edge of the iliac crest here, you have the anterior superior iliac spine. From that area, or from that bony process, is usually how he phrases it, you come down and you get to a ligament. This ligament is called the inguinal lim ligament. The inguinal ligament is attached to two separate bony processes. We talked about this one up here. This one down here is called the pubic tubercle. The pubic tubercle is a bump on this bone right here called the pubis. In between the two pubises or pubic bones, you correct in calling them either one, is the pubic symphysis, which is a piece of cartilage responsible for holding the pelvis together. In women, this is something I would know for lecture. It doesn't get tested a lot, but it is very helpful to know because if it does get asked, it's a very simple thing. In women, the pubic symphysis actually expands, or in other words, stretches out in response to hormones during uh, child delivery. So what this allows the woman to be able to do is expand the pelvis. There is one problem with this mechanism. This can overstretch and has the potential to break during